When you think of chemiluminescence, you probably first think of luminol, but have you heard of lofene? Lofene was first synthesized in 1877 by a Polish chemist, 25 years before luminol was first synthesized. Since then, it seems to have been largely forgotten about. Not many people have heard of it now, and in fact, there's no Wikipedia page on it. This makes sense because its luminescence is much less spectacular than other common ones like luminol or TCPO, but it is much easier to synthesize. This synthesis will be one step using benzyl, benzaldehyde, ammonium acetate, and a solvent of acetic acid. I've shown in a previous video how to make benzaldehyde, and the synthesis of lofene is possible using only benzaldehyde and ammonia. To start, I added 70 milliliters of glacial acetic acid to a 250 milliliter flask. I then added, in small portions, 6.9 grams of ammonium bicarbonate. The mixture bubbled, and after it stopped bubbling, I moved on. I next added 3.3 grams of benzyl. This was followed by 1 milliliter of benzaldehyde. I attached a reflux condenser above the flask and heated the contents to boiling. The mixture was boiled for a total of 2 hours. After finishing reflux, it was cooled to room temperature and poured into 200 milliliters of 5% ammonia solution. The flask was rinsed out with more. I tested the mixture's pH and found it to be only slightly acidic. I moved on to filtering because of this. The crude product was filtered off under vacuum, washed with a small amount of water, and transferred to a 150 milliliter beaker. To begin purification by recrystallization, I added in some 95% ethanol. The beaker was covered with a watch glass and heated to boiling. I continued adding in ethanol until almost everything dissolved, which took about the whole beaker. It was then taken off heating and cooled to room temperature. It was then placed in a freezer overnight to cool it down to 0 degrees Celsius pretty much everything had precipitated. The pure product was filtered off under vacuum, washed with a small amount of ethanol, and dried thoroughly on the pump. I dried it here for about 10 minutes, which removed nearly all of the ethanol. Not, not everything was gone though, so I added it to a watch glass, placed it on my hot plate at low heat, and dried to a constant mass. I was left with 1.62 grams of relatively pure lofene. This represents a 58% yield. This is somewhat low, but it was more than I was expecting, so I was pleased. To show its chemiluminescence, I added 0.2 grams to a flask. Onto this solid, I poured in 10 milliliters of methanol. I first made solution B with 1 gram potassium hydroxide, 5 milliliters methanol, and 15 milliliters of water. Solution A was 3 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide and topped up to 25 milliliters with water. Solution C was 2 milliliters of 8% sodium hypochlorite solution and topped up to 25 milliliters like the last one. Solutions A and B were poured into the flask with a lofene. I then dimmed the lights and poured in solution C. 
The light produced is somewhat weak, and my camera is very bad at filming in the dark. The human eye picks it up a lot better. I put in two pictures of before and after adding the solution to show the light produced a little more clearly. Another demonstration uses air oxidation of lophene to produce chemiluminescence. This produces a much longer glow and looks a lot cooler, but unfortunately it is very, very dim and my camera cannot pick it up at all. I would like to extend a huge thank you to Aussie Chemist and Piper Liam for their contributions to this channel through Patreon. I have linked their YouTube channels in the description of this video. If you like what I do here and have a dollar or two to spare, you can support Tom's Lab on Patreon.com. All support is greatly appreciated. Thank you.